It is a key Iron Range community and the capital of American ice hockey. Everywhere you look, there are reminders of Eveleth's passion for pucks. Eveleth is very much entrenched in hockey and hockey is very much entrenched in Eveleth. They've been playing hockey here since the late 1800s. You have the, the icons of the sport like uh, John Mayasich. John was one of those guys we followed and wanted to emulate. <laughs> I call him slap shot. And John Mayasich would know. It's his first game. He's credited with first utilizing the slap shots in organized hockey. At 83, he's a father of five and a grand and great granddad to many more. Two year old Augie might one day follow in his great grandpa's footsteps and what steps to follow in. I never came in this way when I lived here. I came through the bottom there from the uh, locker room. The historic Hippodrome looks much like it did when he first skated as a varsity freshman in the fall of 1947. One of 11 kids, he learned to skate on the family's only pair. They weren't figure skates, they were girl skates. And no support, and I remember one blade, you know, went in. In high school, an upgrade. One of the kids got out of the service in 1946, and he was getting a new pair of skates. He gave our high school coach, Cliff Thompson, his old pair, and uh, so I ended up with those. They were uh, too big the first two years and too small the junior and senior year. John was a perfect fit for the Eveleth Golden Bears, carving out a career that may never be topped. Going to the state was our objective or dream, and uh, in my case, you know, it was fulfilled many times. Four times to be exact. Hanging from the rafters, banners from Eveleth's consecutive undefeated state titles from 1948 through 51. Mayasich went 69-0 and in high school and still holds many state tournament records. He is considered Minnesota's greatest prep hockey player ever. Winning is fun, but you have to work to win. He's quick to acknowledge Eveleth teammates like Willard Eichela and the late John Matchefs both also state hockey legends. I was fortunate, I had great teammates that played all the sports. John wasn't just a rink rat, he lettered in five sports, even going to state in tennis with a borrowed racket and track and field when his only jumping was at the park. I think I was a senior and the track coach said, I heard you can hide him. John's parents were immigrants from what is now Croatia and he knows that they were proud but they never attended any of his games. His dad worked in the mines, and his mother kept tabs on the 11 kids. John and his twin brother, Jim, were the youngest. I caught my mother looking out the window one day, watching us play street hockey. And I always said she never saw me play, but she did. Ikela and Matchiffs were older and skated off for the University of Michigan. Mayasich planned to join them, but ended up at another U of M. I had a uh, high school sweetheart who later became my wife, so she was a big factor in where I ended up. In Minnesota, maybe it was the maroon and gold colors that I uh, fell in love with. His number eight is the only one retired by Gopher men's hockey. He remains their all-time scoring leader averaging over a goal per game. Fellow Eveleth native John Mariucci, or Maruch, was his college coach for three seasons. He was one of the guys and you just wanted to win for. He'd play for Mariucci again after college on Team USA in the 1956 Winter Olympics, joining Ikela in matchups and winning silver. What about the NHL? People had said that Maruch had a contract from the Blackhawks for me but he was coaching the Olympic team that next fall. So uh, I think he wanted me to hang around for a while. <laughs> he also owed two years to Uncle Sam. I was in the ROTC at the U, so I had a two-year commitment right after college. By the time I was out, you know, married family, and so I don't regret that, not doing it. But his crowning moment was still to come. While playing amateur hockey in Green Bay, he had another chance to put on the USA sweater, but almost had second thoughts. I remember heading up to the airport and saying, why am I doing this? I said, the season's over, I'm tired, I got all this wet equipment, why am I going out there? 
and two days later, we started playing already. John Mayasic for the United States. Wearing number four, Mayasic helped the U.S. win Olympic gold in 1960. I took vacation time, and I got home on Sunday evening to Green Bay, and, and I went to work that next morning. After the gold medal, Mayasic kept playing amateur hockey, coached a national team, and ended up in many Hall of Fames, including the one in his hometown. You can still find Mayasic on the ice, not shooting pucks, but throwing rocks. I love curling, and it's a great family sport. For some of us old guys, uh, it's something you can improve in. And he also visits the hip. We talk about the town and we talk about the community. He always asks how the boys are doing, but uh, we don't talk too, too much about hockey, but you know it's on his mind. Like a puck, life has come full circle. The golden bear that became a golden gopher and went on to win Olympic gold is spending his golden years in the place it all began. John Mason comes to the forefront as as the greatest player that uh, that came from here. But not just Evelyn in, in our country. Everybody here has the greatest respect for what he accomplished uh, as a player, but even more so of what kind of gentleman he is. I had it very good, thanks to the great sport of hockey.